Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So when do you think the big stripers will arrive in New Jersey? If you have to stop and think about it, it may already be too late. That was the post that I made on Facebook on Tuesday as Bobby Reed of Back Bay Plugs caught and released this 58-pound striper on the Rare Bay Tuesday morning from his Hobie kayak. Now, Bobby told me he enlisted the help of a pair of fellow kayakers who held his yak while he quickly ran a measurement on the Boga Grip. A lot of social media detractors out there. I said Facebook. We had tens of thousands of people seeing it. But Bobby told me there were six other people out there to watch the catch, the landing, the weight, and the release of that big fish earlier this week. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And let's spend a moment or two um, with this impressive catch. First off, uh, I think this fish was as much about commitment and tactic as it was with luck. Because Bobby told me that of the kayakers he launched with on Tuesday morning, um, they were doing a, a number on fish to 34 inches uh, throwing jigs. Uh, Bobby, on the other hand, had stuck to his plan, his back bay plugs, the big wood in chartreuse over white. And after three hours of pedaling, uh, his buddy all had four or five good fish. Bobby had nothing, zero, zip, but he kept at it. In fact, he kept trolling that big wood past the rest of the kayak fleet, made a left, bam, hit that fish. Good 20 minutes buttoned up to that sucker before he uh, got her to the surface cradled her for a pick, and then he spent some time swimming along with her to make sure she kicked off good and fresh. Great job, super fish handling, and credit to sticking to the plan to prove that perhaps we are awash with cows at this point as we enter into the first week of April at the Jersey Shore. Now, I gotta say, the timing of this fish was perfect. Um, the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine was out this week, the New Jersey and Delaware Bay edition. Uh, if you take a look at that, if you have your members only copy of that arrived in the mail on Wednesday or Thursday, just turn to the article from my friend Dennis Suler. He's got an article in there about kayaking your way to Raritan Bay cows. He talks about it several locations throughout New Jersey where you can launch your yak to get in on some of these stripers. But that photo, the lead photo of Dennis's article on page 16 was Bobby Reed with a good fish that he had from 2020. So you really couldn't have timed this any better. Congratulations, Bobby, uh, on that big fish. Uh, the pluggers, they're on them too. Uh, Carmine Tango checked in with me with a good fish. Uh, he also reported this back to uh, Phil at the Tackle Box in Hazlitt. All these shops along the Raritan Bay Shore, of course, over uh, at Tackle Box or Upfront Bait and Tackle, all the way down to Julian's in Atlantic Highlands, all part of this new epicenter, I would guess, of the latest craze with big fish arriving. Plenty of guys traveling for the action as well. I heard from uh, Frank at Gabriel Tackle and Brick, who reported that Mike Velez uh, was up there getting into some solid action on good fish, multiple fish, a lot of fish, uh, with some sizable ones in the mix as well. My man Chuck Manny, he launched, his, uh, launched Thai Man just a couple of weeks ago, uh, but he said this week they had one outing where they had 76 stripers to 28 pounds all released. He said he tagged a bunch of fish with those green streamer tags from the folks at Gray Fish Tag Research as well, uh, which is interesting because I'm sure a majority of these fish uh, are that are staging in the Raritan Bay at this point are pre-spawners. You know, they're getting fat before they head up the Hudson to spawn later on in the month. Uh, some folks were questioning the, the size of the fish that they saw on Facebook, said there's no way that's 58 pounds. I actually, I emailed my friends uh, over at Monmouth University, John Tiedemann and Keith Dunton. I wanna find out exactly how much weight a big belly full of eggs will contribute to a fish like that. I didn't get the information yet, but we will find out. But again, I believe a lot of these fish, these big spawning fish are in there, they're feeding, they're staging. When we find them in the rare, whatever part you're gonna find them, at some point they're gonna move up the Hudson. And we'll be there at the end of May when they come back out to do our satellite tagging program. I'll got, I have uh, more information on that uh, in the coming weeks as well. It's not just the Hudson spawning stock either, but I originally had planned 
the big photo, the big story in my video forecast this week was going to be about uh, the big fish caught on the Delaware. We talked about Dave, Mor uh, Dave Norman's 41 incher last week. Well, lo and behold, uh, the following day, last Friday, I heard from Aaron Sims, who captured an image of David Mitchell, who was fishing from shore somewhere along the Delaware River stretch. He was using the blood worm in a bag, hit this 47 inch spawner that he estimated at just shade over 50 pounds before another quality release onto the river. You notice how these guys, uh, you saw it before too in that picture uh, from Bobby, uh, and especially here with Dave as well, cradling that fish. That's the smart thing. Do your best uh, this season not to hang those fish vertically. I know if you've got to get a, a weight on that fish, if you feel like, oh, I got to get a, I got to get a boga on this one, don't hang it vertically and look too long at that boga grip. Uh, most of the scientists I've spoken to said with those big, fat, egg-laden females, that hanging it upside down like that for too long kind of you know, kind of stretches. Gravity does its work. So you don't want to hang it vertically for too long. You certainly don't want to stick your hand in the gill plate either. But again, cradling that fish as you're handling it. Uh, maybe you want to take a quick measurement, but do your best to don't handle it too long. Don't keep it out of the water too long. Try to get it back in as quickly as possible after your snapshot. And you may find yourself having to swim it a little bit. And not that back and forth, but try to get it so the water is going through the mouth and up over the gills. Uh, so you can release it and let her go up there to do her thing. Hopefully we'll have a good uh, recruitment season, a lot of young fish into the, uh, into the ecosystem, we can only hope. While it's been blood worms on both sides of the Delaware plugs, of, of course, are accounting for a good share of fish now, uh, especially now that the bait ha has arrived and, uh, and the water temperatures are up a little bit as well. Even in the middle of the state, um, Great Egg, Mullica, Barnegat Bay, guys are finding action on the artificials. Uh, even with some of those smaller fish, but there's some good fish in the back bay as well. Andrew Hurdle said a twitch bait at Graveling Point put this guy on the sedges last week. So that's good to know as well that maybe you can get out there plugging along the side banks. Honestly, there are stripers just about all over the place, except maybe out front along those open beaches. But things are only going to improve. And for those looking for some good eating in the time frame before, you might want to turn your attention to winter flounder in the back because that action is starting to heat up as water temperatures have improved. I know it's only two fish, but that is about as sweet a tasting fish as you'll find. We're, we're predominantly talking about central and north Jersey, of course. Um, Ryan Lorry, Mike O'Rourke, for example, from Salty Chefs Fishing, they hooked up with their first flounder of the year at Shark River in Belmar last week. So hopefully that action on the Shark River is starting to improve if you're looking to get out to the Elstree Pier or something like that. Uh, Six-year-old Gerard DeLuisi, he got in on the flounder pounding with his father in the upper Barnegat Bay just the other day. Sandworms in a heavy chum slick. Now word is young Gerald here has a few more trips under his belt than many do. He made 25 trips last season with dad and his grandfather from the back bays to the triple wrecks. So I'll be keeping an eye out on you this season looking for more catches from you. Another guy with some salt in his socks is Ed Plicta. He let me know that just a little bit farther south in Barnegat Bay he found the flounder chewing uh, over the weekend just off of Good Luck Point. I know I say flounder and guys in Atlantic and Cape May County are scratching their head going, flounder, it ain't flounder. I, you, know, you know, everything to the north is, is flounder only when it's the winter variety. Down in South Jersey and into Delaware, you say flounder in terms of the summer variety, but no, no winter flounder really to, to speak of uh, below uh, Long Beach Island, but you are in the mix, of course, for some of the best April action on the way. It's only a matter of time before some of those jumbo uh, weekies, the bluefish, and some early arriving black drum are reported in the southern part of the state. Along that front, I should tell you, I am happy to see some of the shops now are stocking fresh bunker because we do have a lot of bunker in the area, so you might consider chunking at some point. Also, learned last week from the folks at Hands 2 Bait and Tackle, they were getting a limited supply of surf clam uh, in the shop as well. Not sure of the status this week. If you're interested, you might want to give them a call uh, but that's a good sign because at some point very soon we're going to start getting the first catches of black drum, especially in Great Bay for those guys working the sod banks. But uh, I would expect the black drum bite in Delaware Bay to turn on a little bit earlier this, this year, just like we said of the striper bite on the rare. And we said that was probably going to get started a little earlier than usual. So hopefully we're right on the mark on both of those things. But things are definitely starting to pop uh, in the southern half of the Garden State. Much of the sh uh, many of the shops 
uh, that were on limited hours or closed for the winter months. They are up and operational. Most every tackle shop you find in uh, Cape May County, for example, is back to their, uh, if not normal hours, they're back to some regular hours uh, as well. Uh, I saw the pier at Grassy Sound reopens in a couple of weeks, just in time for some of those tide runners. And who knows, maybe the sheep's head will be in thick along with those black drums earlier than normal this year. Now on the northwest side of the Garden State, a lot of folks are waiting for the shad run to get underway. Big D river guide Dieter Scheel shared posts online that indicate some of those fish are starting to move upriver as well. So perhaps the shad run is just starting to get underway with Shad Watch 2021 and some sweet water info on largemouth and smallmouth as well. Let's check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, what a difference a week makes. I mean, the fishing is completely different from this time last week. Now, we've had to deal with some kind of crazy rain over the past few days, and now we're dealing with a little bit of cold, but things are certainly looking better. I wanted to touch on a few things that are happening and give you some tips and tactics on how they're, they're going. Uh, I was touching base with Jen Wong over there in New Jersey, and he's actually left those uh, giant pike alone. He's now switching over some bass and being really successful. Uh, he's been using jerk baits and plugs out there on those northern New Jersey lakes, and getting into some nice fish. Now also our own Josh Taylor was getting at some smallmouth here in the Poconos and he was using a different tactic. He was going a little bit deeper with some jigs. Uh, he was using those little ball head underspins tipped with live minnows and dragged them across the rocks real slow and being real successful with some smallmouth. Another great tactic. Now also Eric Gutstall, now he's normally a trout guy but he was again using plugs and jerk baits uh, for some really nice smallmouth so it seems like the smallmouth bite is really hot so guys get out and try that now also we got to look at our shad watch you know the rain had everybody all upset it happened to us every year the temperatures come up come up come up almost 50 and we get a big rain dries the water levels up temperature down and we got to kind of start over but we're dealing with a little bit of a cold front right now weekend looks really promising temperatures warm up hopefully those river levels come back down just a tiny bit I checked in with a couple of guys. I checked with our good friend Tim Keebler. He says you got to work really hard. You're going to spend a lot of hours out there, a lot of debris on the lines. You're constantly clearing them, but you put your time in, you're going to get a couple of nice early season shed. And I also touched base with Rusty Held over at Rusty Ball's uh, Tackle and Guide Service, and he kind of said the same thing. He says you're going to put your time in for a handful of fish, but if you want those early season shed, you're going to get on them that way for sure. So get out there and try them, guys. I hope you go out and enjoy this holiday weekend. Get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Hey, on top of that, don't forget that catch and release trout fishing is open in New Jersey as of April 1st. The uh, opening day for harvest isn't until April 10th, but you can get out there on those streams, those stocked waters now, and have at it with catch and release trout action. I mentioned it last week during the catch and release season, it's probably best you go with the artificial so you're not gut hooking senselessly some of those bigger trout that you catch. So save the eggs, the uh, power baits, and the worms for a couple of weeks, but get out there and enjoy that. Also, TOG action is reopened in the Garden State as of April 1st. If you're looking to get in on the action, pick up that April edition of the Fisherman Magazine out this week. There's a nice article from Captain Al Story in there on anchorless black fishing. I know. I know, some of you traditionalists with the double anchors, you look at that and say, that's cheating. Eh, maybe it is, but that Minn Kota has made it a heck of a lot easier to spot lock your way on some of those good pieces of structure off the beach. Check out our report section as well, because inside you'll find all the captains. You'll find all the tackle shops and the advertisers are classified if you're looking for a used boat, but all those boats that are sailing throughout the state of New Jersey, they've got their names, their numbers, and typically a sailing schedule in there because you wanna get in on that early. Uh, make your reservations now to secure your spot along the rail or in the cockpit if you're looking to take advantage of that April TOG run. I know boat show season is a bust for 2021 thanks to the ongoing pandemic, but if you're up for a little road trip, you might want to consider the Bay Bridge Boat Show in Stevens, Maryland. That's from April 15th through the 18th. 
And I know a lot of our fishermen, advertisers, and partners are going to be displaying at that particular event in a couple of weeks. Uh, the folks at Waterfront Marine, Rudy Marine, uh, North Bay Marina, also Clark's Landing Yacht Sales, among others. I've been to that area of Maryland uh, around Stevens a number of times in the past. It is a beautiful area, great boating destination, and I'll tell you what, the striper fishing ain't too bad in that neck of the woods either around the Big Bay Bridge. Uh, as for being on the road this season. I hope to be doing uh, this video forecast from a bunch of different locations in the coming weeks uh, as the bite uh, continues to intensify in locations in New Jersey. Plus I know uh, quite a few tackle shops have overhauled the interiors this year. Some bigger, better, brighter things from some of these shops. So I'm going to be out there uh, visiting a few of these shops, introduce you to some of the great changes that you might see. Uh, definitely looking forward to checking that out in person. As far as the road, <laughs> she's still in chestnut neck uh, right now, uh, getting fitted with a shiny new Suzuki on the transom. I can't wait to splash that in the Mullica in a couple of weeks and get in on some of the spring action on the Great Bay uh, as soon as I possibly can. I'm going to be sharing some information uh, about that repower. Uh, just kind of cool seeing the old engine come off and the new engine come on, a brand new Suzuki four-stroke. If you are in the same boat as I am, it's taken a while for some of this stuff to arrive. So if you're looking to get repowered, hang in there. Uh, this stuff will be coming. I'm still waiting for one more part. So it's all pandemic related in terms of the fishing gear that you're looking for or some of these boats and engines. I will tell you this, uh, my advice is if you're looking for a piece of equipment, whether it's a brand new reel or a brand new engine, if you find it and you like it and you want it, get it now. Uh, we are still under these uh, infringements as far as the pandemic and what's being sent and shipped to our local retailers. So definitely, if you'll find something you like, grab a hold of it now. Congrats, by the way, to my friend Pedro. Uh, from winter perch to spring stripers, this little, man, this little man has been putting his time in on the water, and he just got himself his first keeper of the 2021 season. Congratulations, Pedro. Keep it up. You want a keeper? Pick up the April edition. It's out this week. Flip through it, get you everything you need to do, need to know to get geared up for this April action that's underway. And of course, don't forget, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because every time we send an upload to YouTube, you'll get the notification. You'll check out these videos first. Good luck on the striper, flounder, and tog grounds in the days ahead. Catch them up, and we'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.